Well, the legacy of Marcus Whitman is under some new scrutiny. A statue of the missionary doctor who played a key role in white settlement of the Northwest will be removed from the U.S. Capitol. Yeah, now there are plans to tell the story of his life and death in a whole new way. And Cairo 7's Graham Johnson shows us how Whitman's legend was built on a lie. In the U.S. Capitol, in Statuary Hall, Marcus Whitman represents Washington State, but not for much longer. He has spent over 70 years telling the Washington story. It's time for him to rest. Deborah Lakanoff is the state legislator who sponsored a bill to replace Whitman's statue with one of Billy Frank Jr., the Native American activist and environmental leader. When Billy fought for the salmon, he fought for everybody in Washington state. The bipartisan bill passed overwhelmingly last spring at a time Whitman's legacy is being reassessed. We have been memorializing a myth rather than the actual story. Bobby Connor directs the Tomuslik Cultural Institute on the Umatilla Reservation, which includes the Cayuse tribe. We met at the Whitman Mission Historic Site in Walla Walla, where in 1847, the Cayuse murdered Marcus Whitman, his wife Narcissa, and 11 other white men. We were the boogeyman under the bed for a very, very long time. Marcus and Narcissa Whitman came to Walla Walla in the 1830s as Protestant missionaries, but only baptized two Native Americans. He more or less gave up on that job and turned to real estate. Seattle author Blaine Hardin has a new book on the Whitman story and says Whitman became a major force for white settlement in the Northwest as he and Narcissa welcomed the ever larger groups of wagons on the Oregon Trail. The Cayuse, who initially welcomed Whitman, increasingly saw an invasion of their homeland by white people bringing diseases. We did not have immunity to the high fever diseases that were coming our way. Entire villages were wiped out by smallpox and measles. Whitman was a medical doctor and unsuccessfully treated Indians who fell ill. Cayuse tradition called for killing failed medicine men. After many warnings, the Cayuse murdered him. His death sentence was a malpractice execution. When news of the Whitman massacre reached Washington, D.C., Congress sent in an army, officially making Oregon Territory part of the United States and paving the way for the future states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Marcus Whitman and Narcissa Whitman are really important to the history of the Pacific Northwest because they got killed. Five Cayuse were hanged for the murders. Then, in the decades after Whitman's death, a big lie took root. Rival missionary Henry Spaulding recast Whitman as a patriotic martyr, claiming Whitman saved Oregon. Spaulding turned them into national heroes by making up a lie about what Marcus Whitman had done. The legend goes that in 1843, Whitman rode his horse east in winter to warn President John Tyler of a British and Catholic plot to take over Oregon. There was no British plot. Around 1900, scholars debunked the Whitman myth. They proved his true purpose back east was to visit missionary headquarters in Boston, where he persuaded leaders from shutting him down because of infighting. He didn't go to save Oregon, he went to save his skin and his job. But in Washington state, the myth persisted. A former Whitman College president spent 40 years using it as a fundraising tool. The lie about Whitman saving the Pacific Northwest saved Whitman College from going broke. In the 1950s, the state legislature sent the Whitman statue to Washington, D.C. Washington school kids were taught the myth about Whitman saving Oregon well into the 20th century. Maybe that story isn't quite what we were told when we were in fourth grade. So now, the National Park Service is working on more accurate interpretive signs at the Whitman Mission site with the help of tribal leaders. That story has become a stain or a blemish on our people's history for a very long time. Their reputation as murderers of a national hero cost the Cayuse nearly all of their homeland. 
we were penalized in the Treaty Council for having killed the Christians. It took casino gambling 150 years later for the Cayuse to prosper on the Umatilla Reservation. Just this summer, President Biden nominated Umatilla leader Chuck Sams to become the first Native American to lead the National Park Service, which runs the Whitman site. Whitman College now partners with Umatilla leaders, and in a couple of years, the statue in D.C. and another one in Olympia will move somewhere around Walla Walla. Walla Walla already has a statue of Whitman, though it's close to downtown. It's on an obscure corner of the college campus behind this hair salon and next to a railroad track. A faculty committee chose this spot in the 1990s. They put it near the track, hoping that a train would derail nearby and take out the statue. That's how things might go for the homecoming of Marcus Whitman, whose death was truly pivotal in the taking of the West, but whose legend was built on a lie. In Walla Walla, Graham Johnson, Cairo 7 News.